One of the most shocking executions that took place during the reign of Henry VIII was when his fifth wife, Catherine Howard, made her way to the scaffold. Inside the Tower of London, an axeman awaited on a platform that was covered in hay to soak up her blood, and as the witnesses prepared themselves for seeing the death of the young queen, the heads of the men she allegedly slept with were still hanging high above London Bridge. But one of those men who was executed for allegedly having an affair with Catherine Howard was Francis Deerham. Much is known about the other man she slept with allegedly, Thomas Culpepper, who was a well-known and liked member of the King's court, and he was a close friend of the King, Henry VIII. But Deerham's alleged relations with Catherine supposedly took place many years before she became the King's wife. Join us today as we look at the brutal execution of the man who slept with Henry VIII's Queen, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Francis Deerham was born around 1506 to 1509, and he was the son of John Deerham from Norfolk, and his wife Isabel. It's assumed he had a rather normal upbringing, but he is best known in history for allegedly having relations with the fifth wife of Henry VIII. It's alleged that the relationship between Deerham and Catherine Howard took place when she was around 15, and before she became the Queen. The pair whilst Catherine lived in the household of Agnes Howard, the Dowager Duchess of Norfolk, struck up a relationship, and Deerham was working for Agnes. Before he was involved with Catherine, he was already having relations and an affair with Joan Bulmar, who lived in the same household, but Catherine's eye was captured by Deerham, following the breakdown of a rather inappropriate relationship Catherine allegedly had with her music teacher Henry Mannix. He was much older and it's clear by today's standards that Mannix groomed her and abused her. It's believed their relationship was physical and that he assaulted Catherine when she was just 13. Mannix would be the one who would end the relationship Deerham had with Catherine as he wrote to Agnes Howard and told her to visit Catherine's bedroom half an hour after she went to bed as she would see things that sure displease her. When she entered the bedchamber, she found Francis Deerham and Catherine Howard and because of this Francis was then sent away and Catherine was scorned by Agnes. She was told that her reputation would hurt her beauty, and it's believed Agnes was more bothered about Catherine's appearance than her morals. Deerham left England to go to Ireland where it's believed he was involved in acts of piracy. Before he left he asked Catherine to look after £100 of his money, most of his savings. But Catherine Howard's career would take a different path. Whilst Deerham was away, she was made a lady-in-waiting to Henry VIII's fourth wife, Anne of Cleves. But shortly after Deerham returned, he then became a secretary at Hampton Court Palace and was possibly given this job to silence him talking about Catherine Howard's previous relationships. This would have affected her chances of marrying a rich and powerful husband, so Deerham was kept quiet. However, Henry VIII's eye was captured by Catherine after his scandalous marriage to Anne of Cleves. Catherine became the king's mistress and Henry was infatuated with her, especially after the pair had slept together and Catherine was then made queen after she married Henry VIII. The age difference was huge, and it was not a good match, as Henry at this time was large and grotesque and hugely overweight and old, and Catherine was still just a teenager. But on the 27th of August 1541, Francis Deerham approached and confronted Catherine at Pontefract Castle, whilst court was in progress. Catherine was probably blackmailed, and was forced to make Deerham her private secretary, and he later then became a gentleman usher of the Queen's Chamber. Francis said that if Henry VIII died, then he planned to marry the Queen, and he would benefit greatly from his previous relationship. But at this time, rumours were circulating around court about the Queen's infidelity with another man, Thomas Culpepper, and Deerham may have made these claims to make Culpepper jealous. We know that Deerham was a violent man who had a bad temper and was also often very drunk, and at one time he attacked another gentleman usher who questioned Deerham at court one time during a meeting. But things quickly moved, as Archbishop Thomas Cranmer was alerted to rumours about Catherine's previous relations and possible adultery behind the King's back. This prompted a full investigation, and Thomas Culpepper, Catherine Howard and Francis Deerham and many other members of Catherine's family were arrested. Much speculation emerged around Catherine and Culpepper, and Jane Boleyn Lady Rochford had arranged for them to meet. But Cranmer also found evidence that Deerham and Catherine had a premarital relationship. This was obtained under interrogation, but the pair claimed they had never been intimate despite being arranged to marry at some point. Deerham testified against Culpepper, saying that he had captured the Queen's affections, 
and not hers. But Cranmer now had to sort the problem out, as a pre-contract between Deerham and Catherine would have been as binding as a marriage, and this would have cemented if the pair had relations like its claim they did. This meant that Catherine Howard's marriage to the king would have been unlawful, which was then of course a huge problem. It's believed that Agnes Howard may have even burned any piece of evidence of the pre-contract between the pair, and that letters between the two were thrown out. Deerham admitted under torture that the pre-contract was there, but Catherine admitted that she did have relations with Deerham on many occasions, but she blamed Deerham for forcing himself on her. Many witnesses claimed this was a lie, and they said that the Queen enjoyed the company of Francis, and whilst they were younger they would walk proudly arm in arm, and that Catherine seemed happy. This was of course very dangerous, as it invalidated the King's marriage. On the 4th of November 1541, Catherine was imprisoned at Sion Abbey, and weeks later she lost the title of Queen, and was referred to as simply Catherine Howard. But on the 1st of December 1541, Thomas Culpepper and Francis Deerham were tried at Guildhall for treason. The court heard of the charges and their alleged evidence, and with this they were both sentenced to a traitor's death. They were to be hanged, drawn and quartered, but they then petitioned to Henry VIII to receive a simpler and less painful beheading. Culpepper was allowed this, but Deerham was made to suffer. On the 10th of December 1541, Francis Deerham was taken from the Tower of London to Tyburn, where he was hanged, drawn and quartered. He was paraded throughout the streets, behind a horse on a hurdle, and was then taken to the scaffold in front of a large crowd. Deerham was to die a traditional traitor's death, and he was greeted by the executioner, who was armed with his noose and also an axe. It was said that Culpepper and Deerham were drawn from the Tower of London to Tyburn, and there Culpepper, after an exhortation, made to the people to pray for him. He, standing on the ground by the gallows, kneeled down and had his head stricken off. And then Deerham was hanged, membered, bowed, headed and quartered, and both their heads were then set on London Bridge. So Culpepper's head was stricken off, but Deerham was hanged until almost dead, then disemboweled and his privates were cut off, then burned in front of him, before he was beheaded and cut into four pieces. His head was stuck on London Bridge, and as mentioned, allegedly Catherine Howard saw this when she travelled too to the Tower of London, where she was imprisoned. She would later be executed along with Jane Boleyn on the 13th of February 1542, three months after her former lovers were. But she was given a private execution, away from the eyes of the public. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.